In this section, we want to introduce the idea of partial derivatives. Just like when we looked at derivatives before, there were first derivatives, second derivatives. So we're going to be looking at both first partial and second partial derivatives. First thing we want to introduce is just the notation that's going to indicate what we want to find is a partial derivative. So when we are dealing with functions of one independent variable, so a function like f of x, we had a few different notations, all of which meant find the derivative. So a couple of different ways we could write that would have been dy over dx, df over dx, d over dx, f of x, or f prime of x. So we had a few different notations all of which meant find the derivative of some given function or some given equation. Similarly, we're going to have specific notation, um, a few different versions of it, which will all translate as find the partial derivative. So when we're talking about partial derivatives, we're talking about a function that has two independent variables. So instead of just a function f of x, we're dealing with a function f of x comma y. So we have two independent variables. To indicate that we want to take the derivative of some given function, we could use the notation delta z. So basically this kind of just looks like a cursive d, but it's the Greek letter delta we use to indicate partial derivatives. So delta z over delta x would mean we want to take the derivative of some function z equals f of x, y with respect to x, or we could take the derivative of that function with respect to y. So we're going to be able to differentiate with respect to either one of those two variables. Another way to write this would be to say f and then use a subscript x, x comma y. So this would mean find the derivative of our function with respect to x, or we could find the derivative with respect to y. So with two independent variables, we're going to have to pay careful attention to which variable we're differentiating with respect to. And when we do that, what will happen is we'll treat one letter as the variable. So for instance, if we're differentiating with respect to x, we'll think about x as that variable that we want to apply our derivative properties to and we'll treat the other variable as a constant. So if we're differentiating with respect to x, anytime we see a y, we just treat it like it was a constant, like it was a 2, a 4, some constant multiple. So we call this partial derivatives, essentially because what we're doing is only differentiating part of the function, is one way to think of that. So if we're differentiating with respect to x, the only part we're differentiating is the x part. So things to keep in mind is that all of our previous rules and properties still apply, meaning the product rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, all of our basic derivative properties for the standard types of functions that we see. So let's look at a few examples here. In example one, we have f sub x, x, y, we want, meaning we want to find the derivative of f with respect to x for this given function. So the first thing we could look at doing is rewriting this just by highlighting, since we're, in, since we're differentiating with respect to x, we could rewrite this by highlighting where the x values occur. So we have an x squared and an x. So when we look at the first term, we're going to differentiate x squared. In the second term, we're going to differentiate the x, but the 4 and the y we'll just treat as constant multiples, so those aren't going to change. And then in the last term, there is no x variable. So since you treat this whole thing like a constant, the derivative of any constant is 0, so that's just going to go to 0. So when we look at evaluating f sub x, the derivative of f with respect to x, we'll get the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, 
minus 4 times the derivative of x, which will be 1, and then times y, since again, we're just treating that as a, as a constant, so the derivative doesn't affect it. <clears throat> and then the derivative of 7y squared, since we're treating that just as a constant with no variable component, the derivative there is just 0. So our result becomes 2x minus 4y. In example 2, we want to differentiate exactly the same function, but the difference here being that in the first example we differentiated with respect to x, now we'll differentiate with respect to y. So this will change the part of the function that we want to focus on. Now what we're going to be interested in differentiating will be each of the y variables, or the y pieces of this expression. So when we evaluate f sub y, the first term goes to 0, since x squared we're treating as a constant, minus 4x times the derivative of y will be 1. minus 7 times the derivative of y squared will be 2y, or what we get is minus 4x minus 14y. So starting off with exactly the same function, but differentiating with respect to a different variable gives us two very different results here. So again, can't stress enough we need to pay attention to which variable we're differentiating with respect to since that can affect our final answer. In example three, again here we're being asked to differentiate with respect to x, meaning we want to consider the function nine x cubed as the variable portion, plus nine, again, x squared as the variable portion, and then y we want to think of as just a constant, plus 7y cubed. So when we find delta z over delta x, which again just means take the derivative of this function, or this equation z equals this function on the right hand side, with respect to x, we'll get 9 times the derivative of x cubed, which would be 3x squared, plus 9 times the derivative of x squared, which will be 2x, times y, and then plus the derivative of 7y cubed will again be 0 since there's no x component to that term. So what we'll get in this case is 27x squared plus 18xy. In our last example, we've got a more complicated expression here. So we have some interior exp expression being applied to the, being raised to the fifth power. So this is going to be an application of the chain rule. So to find delta z over delta y, the first thing we'll need to do is use the chain rule. So our outer function is x to the fifth. This will become 5 times 4x plus 5y to the fourth, then times the derivative of that interior function, so 4x plus 5y, and we need to find the derivative of that interior expression. And in this case, we're differentiating with respect to y, so only that second term has a y variable. So this will become 5 times 4x plus 5y to the fourth, times 0, since the derivative of 4x with respect to y is just a constant, plus 5. Or 0 plus 5 is 5, so we get 5 times 5 is 25 times 4x plus 5y to the fourth power. So again, all those previous rules, the chain rule, product rule, quotient rule can still apply to our partial derivatives.